How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Johnny here again, taking a look at 16.10 stuff, acid-based behavior, and chemical structure. So our objectives are to predict and compare the strengths of various acids and bases based on their chemical structures. So we're going to look at these things, and you can be able to tell, hey, this one's more acidic than this one. Uh, describe aspects of chemical structure, I'm sorry, to consider. Things to consider are going to be bond polarity, strengths of the bond, and stability of the conjugate base. So sometimes these factors will have conflicting effects and one will win out over the other. Say, for example, bond polarity may want to make it more acidic, but the strength of the bond wants to make it less acidic. One of those is going to have to win out. All right, so typically influence of bond strength will be greater than the influence of bond polarity, and we'll see that later. So a helpful thought. This is how my mind works. Uh, maybe I need help. I don't know. All right, so atoms, I think of, they're trying to get access to electrons, and hydrogen is kind of like the runt of the litter. I think of them like little pigs, and hydrogen is the runt, right? The more likely other things are to hog the electrons, the more likely H plus is going to get pushed out, and the more acidic it will be. All right, so polar bonds will pull electrons away from hydrogen, making it more likely to get kicked off and making it more acidic. Weaker bonds with hydrogen will make it more likely to get kicked off and therefore more acidic because it's easier to break those bonds. And if the conjugate base is really stable without hydrogen, it's more likely to kick it off, uh, making it more acidic. So bond polarity, the more polar the bond is, the more likely H plus is to get kicked off. So if we take a look at CH4, all of these bonds are nonpolar, which is why it's negligibly, I'm sorry, negligibly acidic so it's not acidic whereas HCl the bonds are very polar which is going to make this well we know this is a strong acid and the reason is because you got such a polar bond there that H is likely to get kicked off right so yeah so the strength of the bond is also something to consider the weaker the bond is between H plus and the other atom the more likely it is to be broken and more, making it more acidic so, for example, the bond enthalpy for HF is 568 kilojoules per mole. So, if we take a look, here's HF. If I want to do that, it's going to take 568 kilojoules to break that bond. Whereas HCl, it's only 432 kilojoules per mole. So, I don't have to invest as much energy to break that bond with HCl. And that is why HF is a weak acid and HCl is a strong acid It's because of this difference in their bond enthalpy the strength of the bond even though HF is more polar than HCl it's a stronger bond so it's harder to break less likely for H plus to get kicked out All right so HCl is a stronger acid than HF yep so in this scenario the influence of the bond enthalpy is greater than the polarity HF is a more polar bond but it's also a stronger bond. So that's why HF is a weak acid. Cool. Stability of the conjugate. So if we're taking a look at these two things, I got CH3CH2 OH is ethanol, and I have CH3COOH, which is acetic acid. So the more stable the conjugate base is without the H, the more likely it is to kick off the H, and the more acidic it is. So looking at this, yeah, you can kick off an H, and then you'll have a minus on that oxygen. Whereas over here, if you kicked off an H+, you'd have a minus on that oxygen, but you'd also create resonance here. So resonance structures make things more stable. So because this molecule is more stable without hydrogen than this molecule, this one's definitely more acidic. All right. There's my animation. The reason that it's more stable is because of that resonance structure. So let's take a look at these influences on a couple different kinds of acids. So we're going to look at binary acids where it's just hydrogen with one other element. So binary just means two. So it's hydrogen and one other atom. Oxy acids, which oxy means oxygen. So it's acids that have an OH in the molecule, for example, H2SO4. We're going to look at carboxylic acids. They're acids that have a carboxylic group, which you may see written this way. Uh, and the structure is going to look like this. It's going to be a double bond O and then OH. All right, so binary acids and their strengths. What's binary acid? Two elements. So you got hydrogen and something else. So, for example, uh, HCl, HBr, HF, all these are binary because there's just, count them, 
one, two different elements. So as we go down a group, we get stronger acids. So if it's H with um, F versus H with Cl, as we go down the group on a periodic table, because that's what the periodic table looks like, right? And then you got HE and whatnot over here, uh, the stronger the acid. And as we go across, left or right, we, be, we get stronger acids. So reason for this, as you go down a group, the atoms get bigger. Bigger atoms have weaker bonds. Weaker bonds means it's more likely to ionize, which means you will get a stronger acid. So HF is smaller than HCl, which means HF is probably going to hold on to that hydrogen more strongly than the HCl, and HCl will be a stronger acid, and this one's going to be a weaker acid. All right, so as we go across the periodic table, as we go left to right, we get stronger acids. So if we take a look, we have pH3. Um, and the reason for that is the electronegativity increases. So as we go across, we're going to get more polar bonds. And as we get more polar bonds, it's more likely H plus will get bumped off. So pH3 is going to be less acidic than H2S, which is going to be less acidic than HCl. And that's just moving left to right on the periods, right? So pH3 is actually a weak base. And then if you go one over, H2S is going to be a weak acid. And then if you go one more over and you get HCl, you know that's a strong acid. So that's the general trend for going across the period. All right, oxy acids. They are acids that have an OH group and even possibly other oxygens on that. So here we got H2SO4, right? And here we got H3PO4, right? Which... Yep, cool. So, wait a minute. Mr. Donnie, if they have OH groups, isn't that what a base is? Isn't a base an OH minus? Yeah, you're right. OH minuses are bases. But what happens is when we have an OH ion with metals, we get an ionic bond holding them together. We have electrons being transferred. So that when you dissolve it, those ions are going to separate. So it's going to separate into OH minus and its cation. But when we have OH bonded onto nonmetals, we got a covalent bond. So it's a covalent bond between oxygen and the other atoms, which is harder to break apart. It's less likely to bump off as an entire OH group. It's more likely that you're just going to break the OH bond instead of the O and carbon bond. All right. So oxy acid strengths. The more O's you have, the more likely it is to kick off an H+. Plus the more acidic it will be. So think of this. So again, I said hydrogen's kind of like the run of the litter and it's trying to get electrons, right? It likes electrons. But we got oxygen, which is pulling electrons away from it. And we got nitrogen and oxygen. They're pulling electrons away from the hydrogen, right? The more oxygens we have, the more it's pulling on it, right? So analogy, H is the runt of the litter and the central atom is like the mama, right? The more competition it has for electrons, the more likely it is to get kicked off. The other oxygens are going to polarize this bond more. So as we have more oxygens pulling electrons away from the side that hydrogen's on, it's going to polarize that bond more, and it's more likely to kick off the H+. So if we take a look at the Ks for these two molecules. The only difference is one oxygen. You get a K of 4 times 10 to the minus 4, and for this one, you got 2.4 times 10 to the 1. So that's like over a 1,000 times difference in their acidity as measured by Ka, just from having an additional oxygen. Cool. So the more O's you get, the more likely it is to kick off an O+. The more oxygens there are, the more stable it will be without the H+, because there are more electronegative atoms to share that resulting negative charge. So looking at this, we only got two oxygens to handle a negative charge, whereas on this molecule, we have three oxygens to handle a negative charge. So oxygens, more of them, better they can handle that negative charge once hydrogen gets bumped out. And again, Ks say it all. All right, the more electronegative the central atom is, the stronger the acid is as well. So if I'm taking a look at this, I got CLOH, and here I got IOH. Uh, it's pulling more of the electrons towards the center, exposing the hydrogen, the H+, making it more likely to kick out. So we have chlorine pulling electrons in this way. And we have iodine pulling electrons that way as well. 
chlorine is more electronegative, so it's going to have a stronger pull on electrons in that direction, which is going to weaken that OH bond when compared to the IOH. Iodine is not as electronegative. It's going to be harder to break this bond because it's not as polarized now. And if we take a look at the Ka's, the only difference is chlorine versus iodine. And we got 3.0 times 10 to the minus 8. And for IOH, we got 2.3 times 10 to the minus 11. So we got a factor of 10 to the 3, just about, uh, difference between just from changing that one atom. We got carboxylic acids. So we got this kind of carboxylic group going on over here. Where we got CO, we got CO and an OH group, and it's going to be on what attached to the rest of the molecule, right? I'm just putting the rest of the molecule. So an example would be acetic acid. Acetic acid is carboxylic acid. If you look at the formula, they may write it this way because it's telling you that that COOH is the double bond O and then OH. So here we go. This is acetic acid. Ta-da! All right. So how its structure leads to acidic properties. The second oxygen pulls electrons away from the OH bond, making it more polar and less likely to break. So oxygen's very electronegative. It's pulling electrons. It's also going to be pulling more of those electrons from the other oxygen out this way, which is going to polarize this bond more, which makes it easier to break. All right. There's also going to be resonance structures when H plus gets kicked off. So let me erase some of my drawings. So you get rid of OH, you're going to get, or I'm sorry, you kick off the H plus, you get this negative charge, and now there's a resonance structure. This double bond doesn't have to be just in between that carbon and that oxygen. It can move, right? And now we get two resonance structures. Resonance leads to stability. So if you have multiple resonance structures, you get a more stable molecule. So kicking out the H plus, resulting resonance structure, more likely to happen. So it's a stronger acid. All right, carboxylic acid strength continued. More electronegative atoms on the acid, the stronger of an acid it is. Uh, they're going to help polarize the OH bond more by making, uh, therefore making H plus more likely to break off. So I got hydrogens here. These are pretty much nonpolar bonds. And nothing really going on there. But I got fluorines. Well, fluorines are going to pull electrons towards them because they are the most electronegative element. And they're pulling electrons from the whole molecule, including from this oxygen-hydrogen bond. So that's going to make this more polarized and easier to break. So if we take a look at the Ka's, for acetic acid, it's just 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And for this, with the three fluorine groups on it, you can see it's significantly more strong. 5.0 times 10 to the minus 1 versus 10 to the minus 5. So to summarize, aspects of chemical structure to consider, bond polarity, the more polar the bond is, the more acidic it'll be. Strength of the bond, the weaker the bond, the more acidic it's going to be because it's more likely to kick off that H+. And the stability of the conjugate base, the more stable the conjugate base is, the more acidic it's going to be. That's all I got. All right. I hope you're starting to see chemistry the way I see it and it all making sense for you. If it's not, see me in class, bring some questions. All right. Goodbye. Okay,